Hi, it's Dwyer. January 20th, 2021. Joe Biden has just been sworn in as President of the United States. Let's talk football. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's first just talk about strategy. What I'm looking at, because I'm sure the recommendation in this video might strike some as controversial, right? My vision is a long game. Whatever the sport, football for example, I want to try to collect at the end. I'm not too worried about winning or losing a specific game if it gives me options on the future. So for these playoffs, like many of you, I've watched a lot of gambling shows, right? They've talked about things like Tom Brady's great record in cold weather, right? They've also talked about things like Aaron Rodgers' spectacular record at home. The fact that this is the first NFC title game that Aaron Rodgers has had a chance to play at home, right? Unlike Tampa Bay, who didn't get a break, the Green Bay Packers, of course, as the top seed in the NFC, got a break. They're more rested. We've heard all the chalk. What I want people to do is to take a step back because there's a bias on these gambling shows. They're not thinking in terms of net profit at the end of the season. They need viewers. They want to give you a winner for this week. Even though there are odds being offered right now on the board that could benefit you down the road. So what I want people to do this week more than any other of the year, right, where you have games being played, right, the conference championships, then the next game's the Super Bowl. What I want folks to do is to think strategically here, right? This is what I'm trying to do. This is how I play sports in general. If you believe that Tampa Bay is going to beat Green Bay, right? This is up to you and your own homework. We'll get into the homework a little later in this video. But if you believe Tampa is going to beat Green Bay and is going to make it to the Super Bowl, could you imagine getting two to one odds? on Tom Brady in Tampa this week, and then two to one odds on Tom Brady and Tampa against whoever they play in the Super Bowl, right? Could be KC, and let's face it, KC has looked shaky of late, right? Chad Henney had to run for several yards to set up the last play, right? Very shaky ending to that Cleveland Brown game. Whether it's KC or whether it's the Buffalo Bills, let's say the Bills upset KC. Whoever Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would be playing in the Super Bowl, you would be getting two to one odds on a money line. Think about that. Right? As you sit here today, you understand that Super Bowls, you know, a team like Tampa in the Super Bowl, you'll be lucky to get more than three points. Right, lucky. Could you imagine if you could guarantee two to one odds in the Super Bowl right now? Tampa might even be favored over the Buffalo Bills, for all you know, depending how the game goes this weekend. Well, what I want folks to do is if you believe in Tampa, before you put a bet on the game against the Green Bay Packers, what I want folks to do is to look at the futures. Here's what I'm doing. Consider a bet on Tampa at plus 400. 
to win it all. Plus 400 to win it all. Understand what that means. It means I bet 10 bucks to win 40 plus the return of my 10. Understand what odds like that give you. If Tampa wins the game, even if you don't believe in Tampa, but let's say you know the history between these two teams, right, from October 18th of 2020. We'll talk about that. Even if you don't believe in Tampa, if you just feel that Tampa might have the secret sauce <clears throat> to pull the upset against Green Bay. If you realize that it's not just Tom Brady that has a history in cold weather, it's guys like Antonio Brown, right? Then if, t if Tampa wins this game and you believe more strongly in the Chiefs or the Bills, you could easily hedge to play for a profit because in your back pocket would be a four to one possible payoff. And of course, the odds should Tampa win this game for Tampa in the Super Bowl is going to be not as generous as four to one. So if they played Kansas City in the Super Bowl, given that Kansas City won the Super Bowl last year. Given that Pat Mahomes, in addition to winning a regular season MVP in the past, also won MVP of the Super Bowl. And given that Kansas City, let's face it, is overrated right now, Kansas City would probably be favored in a Super Bowl against Tampa. So at that stage, with your expected winnings of 4-1 to one or possible winnings, it's a better way to put it, you could then hedge the play by taking KC and pocket a profit. In other words, the 4 to 1 odds allows you to profit just by winning this weekend's game against Green Bay. In my opinion, you can't look away from that. Buffalo Bills, same thing. You're getting a plus 300 for them to win the whole thing. Right? Just imagine if Pat Mahomes is toe, forget his concussion, right? We're hearing that he's lucid, he's doing well. If his toe gets aggravated, and if the Chiefs have a problem, right, dealing with Buffalo's defense, who completely contained Lamar Jackson last week and is peaking, if you beat the Chiefs, you have a possible plus 300. Right? It's like getting plus 150 for this game against the Chiefs, then a 150 regardless of who you face in the Super Bowl. So to me, if you're leaning toward underdogs, if you're at the betting window and you're thinking of an underdog, Buccaneers, Buffalo Bills, right? my suggestion is Take advantage of all the leverage being offered by the casino. Take them on a futures. If you're wrong, you lose the bet, right? If, if I think Tampa Bay is going to beat Green Bay and Tampa doesn't, well, I would have lost that bet, whether it was just on this week's game or whether it was on a futures, right? Unless I'm betting point spread, then it gets a little bit complicated. Right, but understand, if I'm right and Tampa beats Green Bay, then I'm sitting on an endowment that I could hedge. If Buffalo beats KC, then I'm sitting on an endowment that I could hedge and make more money. Let's switch it up here. Let's get controversial. Let's say I recognize that Tampa Bay visiting Green Bay is dangerous, right? It's flat out dangerous, right? Let's say I don't know who's going to win the game. It's that close, but I want to profit. Folks, you don't have to know the winner to profit. Green Bay right now, the one seed in the NFC, 
is getting a plus 220. You heard me right, a plus 220 on NFL futures right now. Kansas City, believe it or not, on NFL futures is the favorite team at a plus 200. Right, KC? Right, not Green Bay. So if I believe in Green Bay, given that Green Bay is the favorite against Tampa this week, given that if I take Green Bay on a money line, I'm getting less than even money odds this week. If the game is too dangerous, if I look over at Tom Brady and I see all those Super Bowl rings, right, if the game is too dangerous, then since I'm getting leverage in the futures market, on both sides of the play strategically why wouldn't I take both sides of the play right I'm getting better than plus 200 folks on both sides of the play why wouldn't I in the futures market take both sides of the play and guarantee myself the NFC representative in the Super Bowl Right, let's go one step further. Understand if Tampa wins the game, right, and you're in a sports book, half the people are going to be moaning, but not you. First off, you'll have Tampa, whether you believe in them or not, at a plus 400. So you're already in the green, because at a plus 400, whoever they're playing in the Super Bowl, you can hedge the play. Right, Tampa's unlikely to be a favorite against Kansas City. Tampa against the Chiefs, whoa, statistically that's so close that it's not going to be a minus 200 to drain your plus 400. So you already win if Tampa wins. Let's say Green Bay wins. Then guess what? You have one game to go, and you're a plus 220 in that one game. More importantly, let's say Green Bay plays Kansas City. Kansas City might well be favored in that game. So you'd be able to hedge the play. You understand, you know, at a minimum, if, if KC is favored, then you have... Bafo odds that you can play with, right? If Green Bay is favored, think about it. You have the favored team at a plus 220. You could give away. You could give away some of your expected winnings and still collect in the end. So the NFC Championship game is more interesting than the AFC Championship game numerically. Because both Tampa and Green Bay on futures are going off at better than a plus 200. If you don't know what's going to happen in the game, you could put some on both. Right? Put some on both. Guarantee yourself the NFC representative and have great profits if Tampa happens to win the game and some profits if Green Bay wins the game. All right, let's switch it up. Just looking even closer at Tampa against Green Bay. I know, I know, on shows, they're telling you about the greatness of Tom Brady and stuff like that. If you're serious about betting on this game, then you need to go back in history to October the 18th, 2020, when Green Bay, unbeaten, 4-0, coming off a bye, visited Tampa and played Tampa. In other words, we know how Aaron Rodgers, who played in the game, did against Tom Brady's Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, talking about game flow at that time, and Tampa went into that game 3-2, and two. Right? Three and two. In terms of game flow for that game, Green Bay scores the first ten points, folks. The first ten. 
So Aaron Rodgers in Tampa was up 10 0. Tampa Bay then scored the next 38 points of the game. If you're preparing to bet on Green Bay Tampa, you need to research October 18th, 2020. Right? Let's go further. And understand, Green Bay is rested. This is Green Bay after a bye. You know, the game did feature two turnovers by the Packers. But it was just two turnovers. How does that explain the fact that Tampa scores the last 38 points of the game? Right? The game has other oddities. Green Bay is called for six penalties for 76 yards, a sizable amount. Tampa didn't get called for any penalties. Right? Understand, too, even though it was Aaron Rodgers, would it surprise you to know that Green Bay ended that game with only 107 passing yards? 107. Tom Brady ended the game with 166 passing yards. Now, given these passing yardage numbers, one wonders whether the under shouldn't be deeply considered in Green Bay, Tampa. Right, by the way, Green Bay in that game held to 13 first downs. You heard right, 13 first downs. Also, in terms of pass protection, while Tom Brady did not get sacked, Aaron Rodgers got sacked five times. Right, five times times. Now sometimes a team just owns you. This is the only matchup between these two this season, right? I don't know if that's the case here, but this game, in my opinion, is too dangerous to bet, right? Green Bay is at home and has been on a roll. No question about it. Green Bay is the better rested team. No question about it. But when I see Tampa beat Drew Brees, a future Hall of Famer, and now they're in against Aaron Rodgers, possibly the best quarterback I've seen, and I'm a huge fan of Montana and Elways. Right? And I know that they sacked Aaron Rodgers five times the last time they played. Kept him below 200 passing yards. Right? This isn't the game I'm rushing out to bet on as a standalone event. It's just not. So what I'm doing, and please don't construe this as gambling advice. I'm just sharing what I'm doing here because it's a high-risk game in my opinion. Right? This game might come down to turnovers. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking advantage of the futures odds, which are out of line, being offered by the casino. You mean to tell me that a team, Tampa, that's been as hot as Tampa's been, right? Tampa finishes the year with something like 11 wins, folks. That is already demolished the Green Bay Packers in the regular season, and granted, the weather conditions were vastly different. It was 88 degrees the first time these two teams played. Right? But you mean to tell me that Vegas is giving me 4-1 to odds on a futures on this team? 4-1? to So what I'm doing is I'm putting money on both teams. I'm punting here. I can punt. Because both of these NFC teams are going off at better than even money per game on the futures market. In other words, both are going off at better than a plus 200. And if KC wins the AFC, right, and I'm rooting for KC just for betting purposes. If KC wins the AFC, 
I suspect that the winner of this game is going to be the underdog in the Super Bowl. So that'll make it, <laughs> you know, that'll make it that much better for me. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me also say this too. It's an even easier hedge if the winner of this game is the favorite because I'm getting leverage, right? I'm getting leverage on the play. So then I could take the other side at greater than even money odds. So what I'm recommending in the NFC in a game this competitive with quarterbacks this experienced and this healthy, right? There's no concussion protocol, bad foot in the NFC, right? Also, let's face it, Buffalo doesn't really have a running game. You don't have any of that in the NFC. But yet the NFC is going off in longer odds. So the bet I'm recommending here is to take both sides of the play on futures. You're getting a plus 400 with Tampa and a plus 220 with Green Bay. What we're doing by doing so is positioning ourselves for the Super Bowl. Positioning ourselves to hedge for a profit. To take what the casino is foolishly giving us. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me also say too that if you have a multi-week approach to betting in general in team sports, you're gonna find a lot of situations like this where the casino is giving you four to one odds on an 11 win team. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.